Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we have all the usual suspects. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Happy to be here. Good to see you. We've got the breathe in the mail and breathe out the marketing. The Zen master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for asking. Good to see you. <laughs> We've got... The most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? Doing well. It's nice to see you. Good to see you. We've got the dude buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, what's up in Wisconsin? Oh, it's hot and humid here today. 95 and very humid. So I'd, I'd prefer the dry heat today. All right, we'll see if, uh, I love it when you call me Big Papa, gives you any sympathy. Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I'm good, and no sympathy, none whatsoever. <laughs> none. Vegas is hot. It is hot. is hot. Yeah. Um, and then last but not least, you know him, you love him. The brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com, and learn anything about anything, Investor Ninjas. Dot com. Scott Todd, what's good? Mark, how, how's it going? Uh, it's going really well. Um, I'm really excited for today's topic. So Please. the question is, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you, you know, um, I think I think someone owes us an answer. Someone owes us something. Is that Tate? Tate owes us an explanation of like where he was last week, like unaccountable, oh. like. That's it. Let me get my mic nice and close. I was out living my big, beautiful life, Scott Todd. I was out playing, riding mountain bikes, fishing, spending time up at the cabin, doing everything that passive income allows you to do. And guess what? <laughs> I don't even feel bad about it. Uh, you're going to feel bad about it well, here shortly. Am, am, by the way, am I the only one that has like pain when he said mountain bike? Like now no. I'm like having like PTSD. No pain. Oh, that was painful. I didn't like know he was a bike. Live for anything. Here's this topic, and we're going to start with Tate, and of course we're going to end with Tate. Do you think there's more success in being everywhere, or focusing on a market to dominate? So Tate, when we're doing our counties, is it? Do you think there's more success in being in all these counties, or do you think it's better to focus on a market one market and dominate it all right i see what you did here you you gave me a, a question where there's like so many different answers that all the coaches are going to come at me from every direction i see what you did mark i thought you and i were on the same page but apparently not so the gloves are off today so you know honestly i would say that if i were to start it all over again i would go deep and scott todd even teaches go deep and you'll learn about this in, in flight school. But what I mean by that is, I think there's a lot of value in picking an area where we know investors work, we know they're having success, we know that there's a supply and a demand of land and being able to become the go-to guy, the expert in this area. And we all know our good buddy, one of our coaching clients, we're not gonna say his name, call him, I think Mike said, Investor X right? Investor X is the epitome <laughs> of this. He's gone out and single-handedly has become the man for land in this area. In fact, he's raised the wholesale price of certain properties by over a thousand dollars a lot. So what's he done? He's owned it. He's, he's become the go-to source for land in this area. And as a result, he controls a majority of the market. And some other people might come in, they might pick up a good deal here and there, but you know, this guy knows everything. It's made his life on the intake easier. It's made his life on the reselling easier because he knows everything about that area. He knows about zoning. He knows about taxes. He knows how to get deeds. He knows how to do due diligence. He knows what it's going to sell for, how quickly he can turn his money. I mean, talk about a foolproof program. And, and that's what I'm interested in. I want to put $1,000 to work, and I want to know that in seven months, I'll have recovered all of my investment. And then after that, I've got an extra $5,000 of passive income to look forward to. I don't need any surprises. And that's why I say going deep is the way to go. 
Well, let's give Investor X some credit, but he did not do it by himself. Investor X right. works directly with Eric Peterson as his head coach. So it makes Who's things got a my lot back. easier for, for Investor X. That being said, we should go to the irascible Mimi Schmidt and see what she would say. You know, I know investors that are that have been in one county that have twenty thousand in passive income, and I know investors that are in twelve counties that have twenty thousand in passive income. I really do. It's not. Yes, there is value in knowing the county really well. And you know the numbers, you know everything about it. And when you sell to someone, they can tell that you're knowledgeable about the area, and that's attractive. But I don't know that it's one county or many counties. I think it's more having a lot of land opens up opportunities for you to sell more land. If you have five pieces, you have five five pieces of land advertised. If you have 20 pieces, you have 20 pieces, pieces advertised. There's more opportunity to sell that land. So I think it's more about if you want to be uh, make a lot of money and be successful, you have to really buy a lot of land and get big, go big. That's my impression. Ah, okay. Um, I like it. I like it. But, you know, this guy doesn't agree with anything you say, Mimi. We all know it because he's just so contrarian. It's the Zen master, Mike Zeno. <laughs> I don't think the worst introduction everyone. ever. <laughs> no, I sound evil. <laughs> You just sound contrarian. You're just one of those people that are really highly opinionated. Oh. Well, well, listen, when it comes I, to this I, stuff, which I think is a good thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a mixed approach, and I'll tell you why. Uh, so I believe for the long haul, with your uh, term sales and building that retail market, you should go into one area for sure. But I also love to wholesale. I sell, I probably, I wholesale hundreds of properties uh, a year, and. Those are all over the place. So I enjoy being all, all over the place for that. So, but it's very specific reasons. So I think you, tend, you can do both, but I do see uh, or feel that if you're going to, um, uh, you know, really dig in your heels for retail, you should stick in one area. I, I think what really this whole thing, the underpinning of all this is the county, county research, research and how you can't, you know, um, if you look at, uh, I'm going to give you an analogy, I guess. So on the fire department, if we're at a fire scene and there's no water coming out of the hose, well, that's a bad day, right? There's a fire and there's, you know, that happens sometimes. You pull the line and so then you, they teach you to trace it backwards. You go back to the valve, you go back in to make sure that it's, uh, you know, it's in gear. Is it in, You just trace it all the way back to the beginning and find out, you know, start there. So don't start panicking on, you know, go right to the very source and then work your way back. And I think if someone's having a hard time with this business that, it rings true here. Like go back to that county research, make sure that you dig in deep, you know, your area, you know what you're getting into and you've done the comp. So I, I think that what we're hearing here is a big lesson on county research. And, and I see value in both because I do uh, a ton of different areas, uh, wholesale, but a few areas retail. Okay. Okay. Um, is that contrarian enough? <laughs> that is not contrarian enough, but I, I like it. Um, I'd love to know what the dude buddy, the nightcap OG Scott Bossman thinks about this. Scott, everywhere or focus? So I, I think uh, in the first few years of this business, I really think you should be laser focused on one area where you become the expert. Uh, and uh, you're going to have a great effect um, on your own success there, but also the market there. Like the, the, the more you can get to know the area, uh, the more control you're gonna have in that, in that market to a degree. The, here's the other thing that Tate was talking about is you know, the foolproof part of this whole thing of going deep is your buyer's list. You, know, uh, you form a buyer's list in that area, in an area where you dominate, and that will be your list forever. So I, I think I'm the, of the opinion that the first couple of years you stay laser focused, go deep in an area. And for me, I look back at my success and I think that's what I did. You know, 90, 90% 90 of my deals were probably in the same county in the first couple of years. Then we started branching out a little bit. I'd say 60% of my deals are still in that area, you know, 20% in another area, and then 20% kind of in different areas beyond that because you come across different opportunities the longer you're in this. You can partner up with deal and do deal, partner up with people and do deals in other areas, 
you come across uh, opportunities to buy land from Mr. Smith in your main county, who's got 20 properties over here, uh, you know, in a different county. So that's kind of my mindset, I guess, in our business. All right. Well, I, I, I like that mindset. I'd be really curious what Scott Todd's mindset is. I mean, we know what he teaches in flight school, but again, I'd be super curious if he's even open to the fact it's, there could be some benefit working a bunch of different counties. All right. So my, my own deal is when I started, you know, I, I thought like I went to this one website, Mark, and uh, this guy has land all over the country. Right. Like, and I'm like, Oh, I want to be like that guy, that mm -hmm. land guy. And, you know, essentially what I did was I'm like, okay, I'm going to go here and then I'm going to go here. And next thing you know, I was in three different counties in three different States. And like literally when you get going, that's like having three different companies. It really is because every time you switch counties, you got to learn, you know, new County research. You got to find new buyers for those properties. They don't translate over. And so, pulled back and then I like got laser focused on one area and I went all chips on the table in this one area. Like I remember telling my wife, like, okay, this is where I'm going to go. All chips on the table. Like everything else is like, I don't want to see it. I just want this one area. And it wasn't even about the County. It was about an area within the County. I think it's like, um, the County's like two and a half million acres. And this is like 50,000, uh, acres of it. So I'm like, I'm going to go right here. And I planted my flag and I started learning everything I could about the county, right? Like everything. That way, when someone called me, I could talk to them about this particular area. I didn't know anything about the rest of the area. I just knew this area. And then the concept where I got that from is that if you look at like realtors that are really, really good, the like the best realtors, they all go deep within like a zip code or within a, a market. They become like the 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 leader. And in fact, if you want to go find like the best realtor ever in your area, I would say like go to Zillow and find the person that has sold the most because you got the 80, 20 principle and all this other stuff. They're going to do the deals and then they're going to have all the success. The people that go deep and are successful with it. So that's what I did is I went deep in that one area. I knew everything about it. I could tell people about it. And you know what? There were other land investors there. And they were probably deep in the area too. But you know what was different is that I was like, gonna, I was determined I was going to out market them. And that's what I did is I went and I tried to figure out how to out market them. You know, did it mean I need to be number one on SEO? Yeah, I wrote stuff, content to, that drove, that drove uh, people to my website, right? Like I, I found things. I, I was able to, to advertise and market this one area exclusively. And that's all I did. And it drove a lot of people and you pick up a lot of people and they get referrals and all this other stuff. And that's how you, that's how I built the business by turning, by being like laser focused on this one area. And then after you do that for a while, you're probably going to get bored. So then what do you do? You go back and you know, you can start to look at a different area and kind of replicate that same success. But I think you have to have success in one area deep first before you just go chasing all over the country especially when you get people that say like, oh, well, I'm really looking for land that's over there in that other state or that other county. And then you get shiny object syndrome and you go try to chase a deal to get in that one, that one deal done. Or worse yet, you talk to somebody and they, they have shiny object land owner syndrome because they own land all across the country. And they say, well, if you buy this one, I want you to buy this one over here. Next thing you know, you're buying land all over America and you're, you're like, what do I do with this? So avoid, I would say, avoid the shiny object syndrome of county research or of counties. And, you know, what I would definitely say, though, is if you're going to do something, like make sure that you check out Tate's lots, because if you're in Vegas, he'll eat lunch with you, too. No, that that is true with the whole lunch thing. But we got to bookend this topic with, you know, we started with Tate, but we got to end with the technician. Eric Peterson, let's get the final word, the definitive word, focus, or are you going to be contrarian and say there's nothing wrong with being in a bunch of different counties? Well, I'm going to side with Tate and, and some of the others here and, uh, you know, kind of 
talk about focus. So I think that, you know, especially when you're first getting started in the business, the, the way you're most likely to have success is to target one area and work it, know it well. Um, by knowing it well, you can build trust when it comes time to sell property there because if you're knowledgeable about the area and you can talk to those potential buyers about, you know, all sorts of aspects of, you know, this subdivision or that subdivision, um, that's going to come through in confidence. And also it's going to help those buyers just have that sense of trust that they might need, especially if you're just getting started. Um, it doesn't come immediately. I think it, it does take time, right? Because if we go to an area where we're learning new things all the time, you know, you're learning about, I don't know, you know, maybe water in the area and if you can do wells and you're learning about zoning and what types of structures can be on property and, and all this stuff. So it doesn't come immediately, but the more you dig in and learn about that stuff and, and like Scott was saying, you know, if you start to build content around that, whether that's for your buyer's list, whether it's for something on the internet or some other means, um, that can really help you not only learn about it, but you know, transfer that information to your, your potential buyers out there. And um, you know, that can have a big impact because not everybody um, that's out there selling land is going to have that same level of knowledge or those same resources that you're producing. So I think there's a lot of value to that. And, you know, it is um, an investment in terms of, you know, kind of time and effort. Um, but I think in the long run, it pays off. Yeah, absolutely. I was on a, I was, I was interviewed on a podcast today and I rarely get this question to ask, but he did ask it. And, um, and I was very nice in answering it, but he wanted to know, do I ever go to international markets to buy land? And so I said, no, because then I told him the story about, you know, how big the market is here and, you know, the billions of acres. And I said, uh, you know, my, my early mentor, Uri, when I would mention something that would be anywhere off of focus of what I was doing, he would tell me the ant story. Did I tell you guys this ant story? You guys remember this? Mm -hmm. No? So I would, I would say, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this I'm thinking about doing that. Some kind of changes. Like, he's like, Mark, do you remember when you were a kid and you would be, you'd have a magnifying glass and like little kids would want to kill ants with the sun. He's like, do you remember doing that? I'm like, yeah, I, I do remember that. And so he's like, okay, so what did you, what did you have to do to kill an ant? He's like, now there's like a bunch of ants and you've kept moving the magnifying glass around ant to ant to ant to ant to ant you generate a lot of heat right but if you want to kill an ant you got to hold the magnifying glass down for a long time a while and focus on that one ant he's like in business you want to be successful you got to kill ants don't just generate a bunch of heat and um i never forgot that lesson and i think it it is it does apply and if you're an ant lover i do apologize for my youthful indiscretions Today, I would never do that, and I don't teach my kids to do it. But at that time, it was like a thing. We were bored. We didn't have the internet, and uh, we killed ants. So that's, that's the story. Mark, I think, I think that that's the thing, too, is like if you look at, you know, like if we're looking at county research, then that, that's, or I'm sorry, choosing a county, that's what we're talking about, right? Like we're, we're talking about getting the laser, laser focused. And I also think that what happens is you become – an expert and people, people get attracted to experts, right? Like when you know things that other people don't, then you, then people are going to gravitate towards you. And then when someone says, man, who should I buy land from? Or who do you know? They'll be like, Oh, you got to go to this guy. Cause he knows everything. And I mean, like, that's also like what you do or what we all do with, um, with our own investments too. I think everybody on this call, like we're all laser focused, on land, you get a lot of people that are like, oh, they're chasing, they're chasing everything, right? They're chasing multifamily or they're chasing this or they're chasing that. And they're out trying to teach stuff where everybody here is like, we focus on land. And I think that that focus is what brings um, that expertise and that knowledge because we've all, we, we all experience these things. It's kind of cool to see. Yeah. And we all have that, 
that real estate ADD or passive income ADD at some point, you know, you'll listen to a podcast or you'll read a book. You're like, oh, this looks sexy. I remember Scott, who do we have on? And we were like, oh, this looks really interesting. I, th I can't remember his name. Uh, um, it was well, long term care. Oh yeah, that yeah, looks yeah. Really uh, interesting Gino, as a play. Gino. Gino. Mm -hmm. Gino had a great. He was a great. That was a great podcast, yeah. and we were both really excited about it. But yeah. at the end of the day, like, we we cool. stuck to what we're great at. Like, why would we go and be a beginner at something when we could just keep focusing and being great and being even better than what we're doing? I mean, it's funny because we, you and I had, um, we had Peter Conti on, right? And Peter Conti, he talks about, um, he talks about commercial real estate, but using lease options. And right. I will, I will admit, like he sends me these emails, we, you know, his, his, his sales emails, I get those emails and I'm like, man, maybe I should be doing, you know, commercial with lease options. Maybe I should, they're very compelling. And then I just think about like, just stay the focus, just stay focused, just stay focused and stay on land. Um, and I think that that it, it, there's a big mindset shift. I think that we all have to make by forcing ourselves to stay focused. Yeah. If you're, if you're getting off focus, just email me, I'll, 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 I'll set you straight. But there are like, we see with our coaching clients, sometimes they get bored of making money. Like they'll put on base camp, Mimi, should I go to this County now? And Mimi's like, well, you're making, you're killing in this county. Like, why are you going to divert your attention and resources, energy to a new county? Like, keep eating that honey until it's gone. It's, it's, it is a thing though. It really is. Um, so I thought this was a really interesting podcast. I like that we mixed up the format a little bit and had Eric answer last, um, as opposed to Scott Todd. So that was interesting. So let's just, it's just in the spirit of mixing it up. Instead of having Mimi, who for the last two years and 22 and a half days has been giving us the tip of the week every single time, we're going to go to Tate Litchfield today for the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? All right. So this one um, might be... I don't think we've talked about it in the past before, but um, one of the, my main tools that I use for communicating with uh, the VA team is a, is a software called uh, Slack. And I know a number of the coaches here on the call use Slack. We rely on it quite heavily. And one of the things that I really like about Slack or that I dislike about Slack is I can't set kind of reoccurring reminders. And so I, I stumbled across this. It's called Workist. Um, what it is, is it's a Slack plugin, it's free. And what you can do is set reoccurring daily, weekly, monthly, yearly tasks, and they can get sent over to your VA team to use it. So this one goes kind of out to all the Slack users out there who are using that to manage their teams, but you download it, you set it up and you can have it go out. You know, every Tuesday you want your VA to get a notification that says, send a deal of the week. And on you know, Wednesday, it could be do this. On Friday, it could be do this. And I got really tired of having to send those daily reminders to my team. And so now I just use uh, Workist. I create the task one time. I integrate it into Slack. It's super, super easy. And uh, set it and forget it. So it's really awesome. And what I like about it is as the team gets things done, I get a notification like, oh, your deal of the week was sent. Okay, great job. Uh, X was done. So it's, it's really nice uh, from my perspective of somebody who doesn't want to be involved in a lot of the details, but I still want to know for sure that the work's getting done. So check it out. Workist. Workist. I, Scott I protest. I protest that this is a valid tip of the week. I, I, why? Nope, nope, nope. All right. Because, because one, I told Tate about this Ooh, back in February. You did it. You didn't tell me about this. You and I were in Tampa in February. <laughs> I've been oh, using it since February 2018. What? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you have not. Yeah. Huh? I, Eric, Eric, how long have I been using this? I've been using it forever. On that. He has been using it for a long time. I don't know the date, okay. but prior don't to Don't make Tampa, me drop my expensive mic. 
Don't make me drop my expensive yes. mic. We had like Here. Voxer conversations about it. Okay, listen, Eric, this is not about, if he's been using this for years and it's not new, he just, he just went to something. He just made it up. That's a garbage tip of the week. You know it. And Mimi knows it. And no, hold on, knows. Scott. Hold on. Hold Mimi, on. A valid what, tip of the week. what is the purpose of the tip of the week? Let me ask that. To share the, new information, not to really share helpful 2018. To share helpful, relevant information that will help people grow their businesses without having to do a lot of work. Listen, yeah. I think I just did that. I'm pretty sure I just, I just nailed it. it. No, no. We're we're gonna call we're gonna call Tate the the slacker with his little oh. slack tools, and you know he's got a new nickname, the slacker. Ambitiously lazy. What can I say? Living up to it. I don't know. I mean, Mimi, are you going to give it to him or not? I think I think Mimi's going to have to be the, the voice of reason here. Oh, no. Put her in the middle. Well, she's just thankful she didn't have to do it. You know, I am. I'm so grateful. Thank you, Tate. I had never yeah. heard of that, though. I haven't heard Mimi, of that. Mimi, you yet. should shoot me down. You should shoot me down. That way you can take over again because uh, obviously no. Scott's unimpressed. I think He's not impressed. A great tip because I had never heard of it before. It's all new to me. And you know what, Scott? Here's what I'll say. <laughs> Top it. Top it, my friend. Don't bring out Camtasia or something oh, like that. Like, Don't come out here oh, and tell me, oh, look, hey, guys, here's a website where you can uh, order fancy cheese battle. or something. It's a rap like, battle. Next week, come prepared. Come ready. We'll go at it. All right? I don't, need a, I don't need a week. I got it right now. Bring it. Let's do it. Let's hear it. What do you got? Wait, wait, wait. Before Scott Todd gives his tip of the week, to compete with Tate's tip of the week, I want to remind the listeners <laughs> that today's podcast is actually sponsored by, you're going to, you guessed it, Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally be life changing. Create that passive income without renters, without rehabs, without renovations, <laughs> without rodents. Go up that mountain of land investing with your Flight School Sherpa who's done it thousands of times thousands of times he's seen it all learn more go to the landgeek.com forward slash training and the best thing about it is that we guarantee that your flight school tuition you're going to make it back in 180 days or less or we're going to refund you how's that the landgeek.com forward slash training scott todd what is hold on hold on mark hold on mark hold on mark I'm so confident that my tip of the week is going to be better than Scott's. Oh, what that, are you wager? <laughs> here's what I'm going to say. Before I even hear Scott's tip, before I even hear it, I'm going to challenge him this, that whatever of our listeners find, whosoever tip they find to be most appealing, most, most useful, most helpful, let us know in the comments, right? Send us a message. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. What are we going to have to wager on this? Scott, what do you got? Well, I know it would make you happy. A What's gift that? card to the, to, to the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> I'd say Scott, Scott has to go to Panera and take a picture. Fine. Of has, yeah, that. that's fair. Scott has to go Fancy to Panera. Fancy dinner. Fancy dinner. And you got to send me a picture. You got to send me a picture of you in, the, in Panera, you know, and, and I want a picture of it. It's going to become the new uh, uh, cover for I, flight school. I don't, I don't accept this. This is lame. As he's scared, right? No, I'm not scared. Okay, Mark, here we go. Here we go. Listen, okay. here's the problem with, that people run into. They run into a real problem with their businesses. And it's not a business problem. It's, it, it's, it's up here, right? Like it's in the brain. It's, I don't want to say it's a mental problem, but it's, it's a mental disconnect, right? We, we're scared. Right. We're all scared of things. You know that. We all know it. We are all scared. You right. might even say that you're scared of success. We like to say we're scared of failure, but really a lot of times we're scared of success, right? right? And there's many different ways that you can attack this. And I will tell you that one of, like literally everybody should try this. Try this for a week. Try it for, try it for two weeks. Give yourself a month if you're really committed to this thing. If you really want to solve this problem, and we all have it, we all do, and here's what you do. You grab, grab 
a spiral notebook or just grab a piece of paper. Like you need three, three pieces of paper, like a college bound paper doesn't really matter. Right. And every day, I don't care when it is morning, noon, night, whatever, go somewhere, like put yourself, I don't care if it's in your car or whatever, and literally just start writing everything that comes to mind, everything. Okay. Don't let that pin stop. Let your fears, even if you can't think of anything, just write down, I cannot think of anything to write and write until you fill the three pages. Take it and put it in an envelope somewhere. Don't even read it. Don't think about it. Put it away. And what you will find in doing so is that all of those fears, all of those emotions, everything evaporate even if you didn't write them down all of your frustrations from the day they just evaporate on that piece of paper it's amazing it's like a secret okay they you just write down and again like i said i don't care don't stop the pen from moving you just keep writing even if you're like i don't have anything to say but scott said to write this just keep writing keep writing keep writing three pages close it down don't worry about it again you will find that all those fears and everything disappear and all of a sudden your brain is clear and you start to get a vision of how to grow your business or whatever it is that you want. Try it, try it for a week. I promise you that it will be a much better tip of the week than the slacker tip. You know, you know Kate, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to go with Scott Todd here. He really put out a huge tip because I actually, there's a book on this by Julia Cameron called The Morning Pages. And yeah, that's right. whenever I would be stressed out, I would actually do this and just write three pages. I'd get my inner curmudgeon out. Half the pages were curse words. But then there'd be something like worth, like, like you, you just feel better once you get all this out and there'd be some clarity there. As much as I think your, your tip is really good for like maybe 0.5% of the people listening, um, this one is, is really a, a, a strong tip. So... You know, Tate, you and I are still kumbaya, but that's a, well, that was a tough one. Like I said, I mean, let, let's let the, let's let the listeners decide because you know we got writing your journal versus automate <laughs> your business. All right, let's let's let the viewers decide what they like. Cause... That's that's true. That's true. So all right, so go ahead, um, go on Facebook. Let us know. We're gonna put a poll up there, and whoever wins, either Scott's gonna make a video of me eating Panera. Or Tate's going to make a video of him eating Cheesecake Factory. Love it. All right. Well, well I thought this was a, a great podcast. We had a lot of fun. I want to remind the listeners, the only way we're going to continue being able to haze each other is if you do us three little fingers. you got to subscribe, a rate, you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelanegeek.com, and we're going to send you the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money, 30 days or less, for free. Support at thelandgeek.com. Please do it. All right. Are we ready to do this, everybody? One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. 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 <laughs> Pretty horrible. See, we always come together at the end. But we always come together at the end. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's fun. It's like a group hug. So, yeah, yeah. So, Eric, how did it feel not to have to go to first this time in the, uh, in the sequence of, of questions? It was a little bit strange, to be honest. I kept thinking, all right, he's going to call on me next. He's going to call on me next. And I had to wait all the way to the end. It was different. What he's uh, saying, so Mark, is he didn't like it. He didn't like it. He didn't it. like the end either. Doesn't... No, he he's first, just he doesn't want to be last. He didn't like it. You want you want to be stop coming. Oh, that hurts, <laughs> boy. When you cut, you cut deep. <laughs> that, oh, I felt that one. Did anyone else feel that? That's like the mountain what biking. Did he, what did he uh, say? He's like, I'm gonna stop stop coming. Uh -oh. Can't yeah, I don't. I don't believe it. Wouldn't be the same. If you guys are listening to this bonus content, please go on the Facebook group and and just give Eric some love and say, Eric, we're we're gonna not listen to the podcast. I'll be here next week. I'm only if kidding. You're not on the round table. So you know I'll be here. 
Yeah, yeah no, it, I, I could see on your face, like, when's, it gonna, when's he going to do it? You know, <laughs> I, I thought you, would, you know, I was showing you some love there. Yeah. Um, you were. All right. Next week, put you in the middle slot. I usually like, I like to have Mimi in the middle slot because it breaks up all the male voices. It like it like softens up the podcast a bit. Thank goodness. You know. I have to go first. <laughs> especially uh, you know, all the all the testosterone that Zeno, you know, just out throws there. out there. It's like it's like that firehouse testosterone, like a, you can feel it. So it's like Mimi oh. kind of balances that out. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, are you, are you afraid to say anything? I, I don't know. I, it, you know, it just, uh, I, I don't know. It's, no, I'm Scott, not saying Scott, it. are you going to help him out? Is anyone going to come to Mike's defense here? No, I'm, I'm comfortable with whatever, you know, being picked on makes you know that people like you. So I'm, I like being picked on. Like that time like Scott Todd like did that, that to me, it was week. like all love he's showing me when he was calling my phone. It was like, like he knew my number. It was all love. I was so, it was, it was, you know, it just, that was not love. No. <laughs> that, that, that was, was pure, pure God intimidation. Fire, like fear. Ooh, I thought that was going to happen at boot camp. I saw was some it people. Me or was it Mimi doing that? Oh, I don't know. What? <laughs> did, did, yeah. did we launch Mimi into, uh, you know, I just have double stress agent. I just sit here yeah. and squeeze these the whole time. Yeah, Mimi, do you do you ever flex out <laughs> in the real world? Like somebody like cuts you off in traffic, or um, you're in the grocery store and someone like does like something rude to you. Like, do you ever just say, "Do you know who I am?" Do you? Uh, I did yesterday, <laughs> but I won't. I won't tell the details of that. Uh, is I the person a couple, still? Couple drinks and maybe some boot camp in person some other time. I, I, is that person still alive? Do they? Oh, we that can't person's going to come unglued when they, it's going to be, he's not going to visit, but I'm going to enjoy it. I don't think it's oh, funny. no. Oh, no. Stop. Stop the There's recording. a story. There's I'm, a I'm, story. I'm, I'm, I'm a buying story. white wine right now online and shipping it. <laughs> next <laughs> next no. week is, is the Mimi drinking podcast. I, I pride myself <laughs> on always making, always doing the right thing, but I did not yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so so almost always then I, yeah. my hands are sweating i can't believe you asked me that today <laughs> Yikes. Just we, gotta, we got we got to hear this because this is a much better tip than than no, uh no, the, uh, we're, gonna, just throw them. we're gonna talk about on the podcast <laughs> how, how, can't be recorded how to oh. get away with don't say it. Don't oh, say it. it's good. It's so good. Carol Baskin, are, don't say it. Are, are, are drones involved? <laughs> Technology involved? Will this no, person be able to? No, I... but my doors are locked. Yeah, with with the tigers involved. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my doors are locked. Yeah, I might go get some cameras. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm all nervous. Oh, there's a store. It's a good story. Right. <sighs> Well, let's okay. end the recording so we can hear it when it's not on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. We're going to go listen to the story now. Oh, what <laughs>